So, Robert and Johnny, welcome to the show. Great to have you on. Um, Johnny, I was going to ask you, first of all, because we talked last about Lost in the Cedarwood and the myth of Gilgamesh and the themes of that album, I wondered if there's a theme for this new album. I wonder if there's a concept behind it. Um, I suppose, I mean, there is, um, but we kind of realised it after after recording it. Um, I mean, we... Yeah, we we basically just carried on writing songs after Lost in the Cedarwood and um, uh, didn't want to stop uh, collaborating. And I th- I think coincidentally we'd both been uh, reading books about um, ancient burial and ritual and things like that. And I suppose that taps into Rob's work and um, and obviously Underland, which um, is about going into the earth. And um, so when we looked at the songs uh, afterwards, it seemed like they'd, they'd n- n- neatly fallen into two categories, songs of burial and, and going going into the earth, uh, and then songs of rebirth and sun rising. Um, so we we placed the tracks in that order with, with songs of burial first and then songs of awakening and sun rising afterwards. And in the middle, we've got this song, The Sun Also Rises, which is the pivot song, which is the turning song um the season's turning and um so that's that's the theme but we said it was nice to realize that that there was a theme (laughs) and there's one song robert burial blessing which sounds like you were trying to write something very timeless and and i gather the recording of that was very special too can you tell us about that song and and the the recording session that 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 gave birth to it (laughs) yeah uh, so i had this i i i visited Aveline's Hole many years ago, which is the oldest cemetery in, in Britain, probably in Europe, and seems to have been used by by Mesolithic kind of nomadic itinerant people around 10,000 years ago, as long ago as that we were burying in this country. So I said to Johnny, is there any way we can write a, a burial song, a kind of funeral song spoken by the, the person leaving to those behind that could be sung at at a graveside, a cemetery side, any time in, in the last 10,000 years and maybe for years to come? So that's that was the idea out of which Burial Blessing grew. And then Johnny musically brilliantly made it into this um, sort of Pogesian. I mean, we speak the day after Shane McGowan's passing and there's a wonderful kind of Merlin Sheldrake on the accordion at the start of that. Uh, so it's, it's a sort of party at the end of the world, really, as it were, that song. But yes, we recorded it twice, as it were, once in, in this former Methodist chapel, uh, which is the recording you hear on the main uh, album and then once that evening inside Hetty Pegler's Tump, which is a wonderfully named five thousand five hundred year old passage tomb or chambered Neolithic chambered tomb up on the ridge above that chapel, and that that was a very powerful and moving place to to record it. And you hear that version on the seven inch in the special edition of the vinyl. It must have been incredible, Johnny, to sing it in those circumstances. It was. It felt. Um felt like a time portal you know you go into those places and and time and place disappear and um you you feel exactly what what they were sort of made for the 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 ancient the ancients knew um how how to how to build a portal Mm. to the underworld and um we felt that and it was chilling it was really 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 eerie and um it's it's amazing to have that that recording. Cosmo brought his um, field recorder kit, and we've got this beautiful recording. I remember but Cosmo it. Sheldrake and Merlin Sheldrake make quite a big contribution on this album, don't they? Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. They're, they're indispensable um, at lots of levels, aren't they, Johnny? Yeah, I mean, they they I suppose they they brought us together in the first place, um, introduced us, and um, helped us stage this annual cricket match that we play uh now which is um fiercely slash amicably for every summer um and um they they they're both fantastic musicians but also amazing sort of thinkers and um at the center of our w- world of friends and and musician friends and collaborators and uh both both albums that we've made actually have been made in in houses connected to them um so they yeah they they seem to be at the center of our universe and there's even a, a song that you wrote for a wedding present for cosmo on on this album uh, where did you give the first performance of that song johnny 
uh, well we were, we were it was at the wedding reception so we were at um cosmo's wife's flora's family house which is where this amazing beautiful party was uh in 2021 was it uh yeah. summer of 21 and um it it that felt like the 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 cracking of the 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 ice in in the in the sort of pandemic stage and people you know really letting loose and it was such a beautiful thing i'd been away uh working in italy and feeling very kind of um stuck out there and and rob and i corresponded about what to give uh cosmo and flora and we came up with this idea of a song which was this love song between the river and a mountain who are separate separate forms but coexisting and and um uh only exist um because of the other if you know what i mean the the, the mountain shape by ice sheets um, since, since ancient times, and um, anyway, so so we we conceived this song, and um, we 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 stole them away from the party and took them behind the house into the woods and um, and sang at them, and uh, it, was, it was a really cool really cool moment. They must have been very moved, weren't they? I, I think I think they they were very happy. The sun, the sun was so hot. I remember Flora was sitting there with a parasol, um, and they just were such a beautiful couple, so full of love and 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 all the future that they will live together. I, it was very moving to me. I can say that certainly. And, and Robert, you said that these some of these songs at least were walked into being, and that's very much close to our heart at Folk on Foot. Yes. Tell us about the walks that you and Johnny have been on, and and how a song emerges from a walk. Well, one of one of one of the ones we've been on was with you, of course, Matthew, for for Folk Comfort, which I, I remember so so fondly. Um, Johnny is in full troubadour mode as we wandered around uh, Wandlebury. It was beautiful. So yes, I think we 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 both love walking. We love walking together, talking, um, um, thinking as uh, as we move. And uh, several of these songs were either kind of the the idea of them was was summoned and decided on while walking or. In, in the case of a song with no name, which is a South Downs song in many ways, was was mostly written both musically and lyrically while while walking in the landscape around Steep, where the poet Edward Thomas lived, who we both um, whose work we both love, a real lodestar for both of us. So how does that work? Do you do you throw out bits of lyric to each other? Do you hum tunes to Robert Johnny? How do, how does that process work when you're on a walk? Um, That's what well, you that, say. Yeah, normally. Yeah, it depends. I mean, so sometimes we've, for me, it's enough to kind of go uh, set the intention at the beginning of the walk for a feeling or an atmosphere or um, a question to be asked mm. by a song. So we kind of come up with the questions um, and, and I suppose some of the answers, but, and, and the music quite often happens afterwards or as I'm on my way home, it's just sort of sitting with me and, um, so that the, we sow seeds on the walk, and then the, and then the tree grows. But um, that that song was was really written as we walked, and um, we we reference um, uh, footfall and and heartbeat and um, the rhythm of the breath um, as the as the sort of sounds that we meet um, of ourselves that we put into the world mm. as we walk. And um, so that felt like a nice. Yeah, that that the rhythm came, and then and then the, and then the music, literally as we as we were walking. So that was nice. So um, I've scoured the sleeve notes, and there are lots of wonderful performers credited there, but I couldn't see the name Robert McFarlane credited <laughs> as a performer. And we do know from our walk together that he's very handy with a haul away when you need him to do a haul away. Um, do we hear you, Robert, at all anywhere in the background, or you know, say, do you make was... a noise at all on the album? I was ha I was handed my redundancy notice as a backing singer after the uh, <laughs> after the first album. So um, no, it's, uh, I wasn't even trusted with throwing cutlery around. So um, uh, yeah, I'm 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 hoping at some you know distant future point to return as the um, as the resonant bass that I know lurks somewhere inside me. <laughs> but I know you're taking this on tour next year. I've booked my tickets for the Alexandra Palace Theatre. Great. Um, uh, Johnny, what's it going to be like? Are you taking a big band with you? Is Robert going to be on stage? Yeah, Rob, Rob, Rob will be there. Um, and we'll have a band, um, which I'm putting together at the moment. And um, 
lots of the people who played on the album. Uh, and the idea is we did a mini tour last year, which was just Rob and I, um, and we wrote stories uh, to kind of um, contextualize the, the songs on Lost in the Cedarwood, which we spoke back and forth as a kind of two person play. Uh, and then and then I sang the songs um, and and it will be similar. There'll be stories, but I suppose um, this is not such a linear narrative in, in this record. So, that, that, yeah, we're, we're still we're still kind of working out what it will be, but it there'll hopefully be um, a beautiful film backdrop and, and music. It will feel more like a gig, but there'll be an atmosphere and there'll be some storytelling. That's fantastic. I, I literally, I literally had an anxiety dream about it for most of last night. So, uh, really? yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to hear that, <laughs> Robert. We're going to end by playing um, "The Sun Also Rises," which you say is this pivotal song in the, at the heart of the album. Can you just give us the background to that before we play it? Yeah, this was uh, this is another song that began with an idea. Johnny a- absolutely had a very clear sense that he wanted to write a, ter- a turning song. You know, we're, we're speaking just as we run up to the um, to the winter solstice. That, that one of the two great hinges of the year, the corners we all turn, um, and 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 this I think has its roots in in solstice turns really. So um, like the the light finally beginning to climb back against the dark, and so it has that chant chant like incantatory quality its lines kind of return but in changed forms and i just i absolutely love it johnny kind of heard it and saw it and made it and summoned it into being then with all of these voices that gathered in the chapel to record that album were you influenced bit johnny by the wassail songs yeah um absolutely we've we've the for the last 10 years or so we've we've done a wassail midwinter wassail um in our community here in east london and um uh and i love i love particularly the recordings of the waterson's um uh wassail songs the, the ones on for pence and spicy ale so we do those on the on the walk we we go to the community orchard and libate the the apple trees with cider um slush some cider on them and sing it to the trees and then we go around houses and sing at people whether they like it or not <laughs> and um but we yeah we we needed a new song for our repertoire so that was that was probably where this came from well let's hear it uh robert johnny wonderful to see you as always and congratulations on the success of this masterful album thank you very much thank you so much thank you. thanks matthew good to see you